Hey there, Omnibloggers. Alk here. A couple things you're probably going to notice. One, a couple changes have happened. For instance, my hair is gone. It was poofy. It's not poofy anymore. Because it's August. I don't want to wear this in August. It's like really hot outside. Here, let me resort to the tablet so I can see just how hot it is outside. Yes, incredibly hot. That is exactly what I thought it was. It's 95 degrees outside right now. I ain't having poofy hair in that. That's ridiculous. Second thing that I want to go over is the fact that I did say I was going to do more rapid video updates. And so this is a video, and this is a rapid update. You'll also notice I put up a poster, because I felt like it. Woo! But mentioning that I was going to do more rapid video updates has gotten me to think about inspiration, which is the main reason why I typically have not been doing video updates, just because I haven't really felt inspired to do them. But I feel that I should do them, because I like to entertain people, and if I don't do them, I'm not as entertaining, at least not on the YouTube front of things. So with that, I've really been thinking about inspiration a lot, and about the concept of inspiration, what causes inspiration, things of that nature. And what I've come to the conclusion of is that people are typically inspired by things that were important to them in their childhood. I really like superheroes, probably because I watched a lot of the, you know, Bruce, Tim, and Paul Dini DC uh, series, and a lot of Spider-Man the Animated series, and superhero films once I got to about middle school age, because that's when Spider-Man came out, and... X-Men started coming out, and we had all these different things coming out. And so I started thinking more about it, and I realized video games are something that's very popular on YouTube. A lot of people played a lot of video games as kids, and it does cause a lot of people to go into this sense of nostalgia, of, oh, you remember when games were better? I remember when games were better. There was Mario Brothers. There's still Mario Brothers, guys. You don't have to keep saying, I wish there was Mario Brothers. It's like five bucks on the Wii Virtual Console. I think it's even cheaper if you have a Wii U. And if you own a copy of Super Mario Brothers and you have an Ouya, you can legally download a ROM and play it on your Ouya. Or on your Android tablet. Or on your Android phone. Or on your Windows PC. I'm pretty sure there's a Mac em Nintendo emulator as well. I can't imagine they would have stopped that. Or even if, you know, it might not be entirely through Apple's terms of service, but I wouldn't be against you guys doing that if you're having fun. As long as you're not doing things illegally, I don't care. Uh, but yeah, so there's that. There's a lot of people who have this feeling of, oh, I want to go back to the old days. So I started thinking about the old days. I started thinking, well, what games from the old days really shaped me? Because, honestly, I played more Donald Duck going quackers as a child than I played Mario Brothers. Which might be why I'm so cynical about Mario Brothers. But one game that I do know really changed how I viewed the world was Skies of Arcadia Legends for the GameCube, which sadly the Windows and PS2 ports never came to fruition. We only got the GameCube port or the original Dreamcast version. Either way, it is a wonderful RPG. If you are a fan of JRPGs, you need to play Skies of Arcadia, or Eternal Arcadia if you're in Japan, which is what it was called there. It, you're, you get to play as pirates, and there's guns, and there's airships, and there's loopers, which are really annoying. The elemental system's super easy to do. The, the encounter rate is super high, like it annoyed most people. But unlike in other games where the encounter rate being high is like, oh, I can't believe there's another encounter. With Skies of Arcadia, you didn't care. The battles went so fast, they weren't even a, a distraction. They were part of the experience. You got to see your characters go through. You got to do your elemental combos. Since the elemental system was all done in-game, not in-menu, you actually got to feel like you were making split-second decisions in a turn-based system. Plus, you had two parties. You had your main party, plus you had your ship party. And anyone in your ship party with the right special move would come out and say, yeah, we're going to fight, and you got to bring out your whole entire, like, 16-man crew. I'm probably remembering that number wrong, and there's going to be people angry at me in the comments. But you got to bring out this huge crew, and they would just fight for you and start smashing stuff, and it was great. And I realized that part of that game was, it was very optimistic. You're fighting the end of the world. There are green giants and laser shooting giants and world ending creatures and a guy who's pretty much Captain Ahab with a robot arm, which is kind of cool. And what do you end up getting at? You get to a point in the game where the world's going to end and, and just like in every other JRPG, because since Final Fantasy V, this has happened. 
oh no, we're going to die, There's, the world's going to end, and the main character gets mopey and you have to play somebody else for a while. In Skies of Arcadia, that doesn't happen. Vice starts to get mopey like there's no way we can win, and Aika, another one of your party members, goes out right behind him and smacks him upside the back of the head and tells him to cut, cut it out, and he agrees. He cuts it out. It turns, in, you have 30 seconds of cynicism, and then it's an optimistic game with this beautiful soundtrack, and I want to know what happened to games like that. Why do we have games like... I don't know, Gears of War or Call of Duty, where the characters are just so gritty and mean, or games like Nier, which as much as I love Nier, Nier is a wonderful game. Uh, it's just so many games seem depressing now, and games that are optimistic seem like kid stuff. And then there's that part of my brain that goes, I don't care if optimism is, de is kid stuff. With kid stuff, I got to take down a freaking giant blue eagle and crash it into a floating island. Kid Stuff's kind of badass. Kid Stuff has, like, Pacific Rim-level action in it. Why are we worried about optimism in games? Because the optimism in games is what helped me keep going. We need more optimism in games. We need more games that are willing to remember that they're there to be fun. And while cynical, explosion-y action titles are fun for some people, they're not the end-all, be-all. And I do think that... Games need to remember that there's an optimism, there's a level of escapism, there's a level of heroism. And it's saddening that Nintendo seems to be one of the few companies that remembers that. And most other game companies just leave that aside. Uh, what, one of the only companies I can think of that actually does make optimistic characters in its games is Valve. And everyone wonders why I like Team Fortress 2 more than Call of Duty. Well, there's your answer. Call of Duty, it's depressing, it's dark. Team Fortress 2, I get to be an angry Russian man eating a sandwich. I don't see anything wrong with that. So yes, I am very much of the mentality that things need to be happier, things need to be lighter and brighter, because cynicism works well for quick numbers. It works well for getting people hyped up, but there's a certain point where it drags you down, and it drags you out, and you just can't take it anymore. And you need something lighthearted to break the mood. And I think, both in video games and in comics, we're running into a very similar problem. We're going to need something bright and happy again. Something bigly, uh, greatly bright and happy again. Or else we're all going to get burnt out. We need to go to a place where we can have fun. And that's why we're in the fandoms in the first place. I made this video a lot longer than I planned on. Uh, thanks for coming in and tuning in, folks. Uh, this is Alchemy Prime signing off. Don't know when the next video will be. Uh, hopefully sometime next week. And thanks for watching. And, you know, I'm going to... Yeah, this is YouTube. You already know the like and subscribe thing. I'm not going to say that every freaking video. I'd like it if you did. But you don't have to.